Summary of The Upper Hand Winning Strategies from World Class Negotiators by Michael Benoliel with Linda Cashdan. Enter the room well armed. Successful negotiations start with research and planning long before you reach the bargaining table. First, study the situation from all angles so you understand the whole context, not just the specific positions or questions under negotiation. Michael McDonald, founder of HealthCentral.com, suggests investing at least four hours of preparation for every hour of negotiating time. If you don't, you'll be particularly susceptible to a bias. The first numbers named will shape your perception of a reasonable offer and will anchor your sense of what is possible. Dennis Ross, former U.S. envoy to the Middle East, said his goal was to arrive at the negotiating table knowing as much or more about the issue at hand than anybody else. Make this your goal to help you avoid the winner's curse, getting the deal you ask for, and then realizing you could have done better. Don't allow pre-investigation to freeze your perception. Let your understanding evolve as new information is presented. This enables you to step away from mistakes. Establish a vision of the deal you desire and make it appealing to your counterparts. Also plan for the physical side of things. Negotiations require physical readiness. Be rested and focused, and negotiate in a location that meets your specific needs. Know your objectives and the bottom line. Robert Johnson, founder of Black Entertainment Television, says negotiations often fail because people come to the table without clear objectives. They don't know what is essential. This is especially likely when the negotiation involves deeply rooted issues or outright conflict. To avoid that, know which elements of the deal you must have, and which would just be nice to have. Know your bottom line, what are you willing to spend? Don't get caught up in the deal itself. Don't let yourself believe that this deal is the only one possible, or that you have to close it because of the time you've invested in it. If the deal doesn't meet your bottom line criteria, be ready and willing to walk away. Having a clear sense of your bottom line will help you avoid an escalating bidding war, just as having a BATNA, that is, knowing your best alternative to a negotiated agreement, reminds you that other deals are possible. Make sure your objectives are mutually perceived as realistic. If they aren't, the negotiation won't work. One side or the other. Or both, he needs to change its understanding of the situation for you to make a deal. Choreograph the relationship dance. Perez emphasizes that whether you're negotiating for a company, a union, or a nation, you're always ultimately negotiating as an individual and making agreements with other individuals. Treat them accordingly. Don't undercut them in front of their subordinates. Don't insult them, deny their legitimacy or suggest that their offers aren't reasonable. Build a personal relationship and always treat your opponents with honor and respect. Seek common ground and shared experiences. Get to know one another as people, not just as advocates. Nothing is too small. Start by sharing coffee. During your research, prepare for shared social interactions. Find ways to show respect and learn the social practices of those on the other side. Will getting close to the other parties undercut you, or make you soft, weak or unable to negotiate effectively? It doesn't have to. Instead, establish a personal relationship that builds a base of trust. If you say something, the other side will give it more weight, if they know that you are credible and honorable. This approach acknowledges something that many negotiators can forget, lots of negotiations are ongoing. If you're negotiating with a person or an organization you will deal with repeatedly, you want good personal relationships for both of your sakes and not just to make your dealings more pleasant, but primarily as a stepping stone to better negotiations. Use humor. If necessary, use flattery, but avoid cynicism, slander, or sarcasm. Negotiate from both sides of the table. Many people come to the table knowing what they want and what would be a good deal for them, but they often don't know what would make the deal appealing to those on the other side. As Matheson learned when negotiating arms control agreements, mutual agreement is a crucial point where many negotiations break down. To keep that from happening, try to understand everyone's point of view. To bring others along, show that your interests are mutually compatible. Start with basic information and points of agreement, then shape the issue so that everyone benefits. 
If you understand the other negotiators' objectives and the history behind their attitudes, you'll be better equipped to demonstrate mutual benefit. Know the substance of their major and minor issues. Learn their style and the composition of their negotiation team. If the other side does not seem to know what they want most, or if you don't know, uncover their interests by making several different, equally worthwhile offers. Seek either a distributive negotiation that divides a fixed size pool of benefits, or an integrative negotiation, in which everyone cooperates to produce a win win situation. Nurture trust. Making a deal requires mutual trust. The other side must know they can count on you. To keep your word. If this confidence is based on your past actions, you have achieved retrospective trust. On the other hand, prospective trust occurs in the present and extends into the future, based on your behavior and personality. Develop both kinds. Each action builds your reputation and, thus, supports future negotiations. To build the right reputation, exchange information fairly, keep promises and adhere to agreed upon. But fair a procedures. Make your goals and negotiating points logically coherent and consistent. The more information you can share, the more reason the other side has to trust you. Assume trust and goodwill on both sides but, as Johnson cautions, always verify claims made by those across the table. Think strategically. Think ahead. Have a vision of the outcome you want and work to coax all those engaged to share it. Don't worry about winning every point, fight tactically, as Perez advises. Negotiate strategically by focusing on the big picture. Take a loss now to get a bigger win later. Winning requires understanding several elements present in any negotiation. First, understand your current mindset and the mindset you plan to have after the negotiation. Likewise, understand the other side's starting mindset and how you want them to think at the end of the negotiation. The more people involved, the more current and future mindsets you must decode, and the more complex your planning must be. As you develop your strategy, Find some way to help dissolve the current mindset to make room in everyone's mind for your new vision to develop. That means addressing the present situation and the forces that came together to create it. Signal your opponents that you are sure your vision of the negotiation will be victorious. Find ways to frame your offer so it is attractive to everyone. Follow the example of sports agent Lee Steinberg, who negotiated Steve Young's contract. Tie your proposal to the other side's vital interests and ground your pitch in facts. Enhance your negotiating power. If you're negotiating with a larger or richer company, getting overwhelmed is easy. But, a negotiation isn't determined by how powerful the parties are. What matters is the specific, strategic power that relates to this particular negotiating situation. This power comes from your resources, tangible and intangible, such as trust, your capabilities, what you can do with those resources, and your distinctive competency, that is, your unique combination of skills and resources. Sports agents such as Steinberg and Jeff Murad capitalize on their clients' unique abilities. Can you do the same? To assess your competencies, do a SWOT analysis, review your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Then do the same for the other side. List factors that might not be immediately apparent, such as alliances with other parties who are not currently involved in the negotiation. If you can find allies among your opponent's supporters, you can shatter their power base and open new opportunities. But, they can do the same to you, so make sure you have strong relationships with your supporters. Design the architecture. Good negotiators are like good architects. Architects look at a building's function and context, and design accordingly. Negotiators do the same. However, properly designed buildings are static, and negotiations are dynamic, constantly evolving under the pressure of new information and the process of discussion. Plan to deal with change. At the same time, certain factors are standard considerations in all negotiations, the size and makeup of the negotiating team, political considerations, technical knowledge, social dynamics, public relations, and strategic vision. Set up as small a team as possible to reduce organizational complexity, but keep it large enough to cover all your bases. 
as Perez and Matheson do in international negotiations, make sure all the parties to the final deal are represented, so they have a voice and feel bound by the final decisions. Be sure both sides are fortified with experts on any issues that involve specialized knowledge. Recruit team members who know their roles clearly, but who can see the other side's position. The negotiation process raises several standard issues, such as how to organize an agenda, and where and when to negotiate. The location is easiest, seek a comfortable place where both sides can communicate with any needed outsiders to get essential information. The agenda is tougher. Some negotiators like to try to completely transform the existing situation, while some, like Bill Bradley, U.S. Senator and former presidential candidate, like to move gradually from small issues to larger ones in order to build trust and the practice of agreement. Timing is the most complex issue, because no specific timeline tells you when to negotiate. You must make that subjective decision. Manage the process. The structure you establish will shape the process of your negotiation. However, since both sides design the structure, and since any structure will have flaws, some adaptation will be necessary. You also have to adapt to unplanned circumstances. During the negotiation, emphasize gathering and processing information. This means asking questions, open-ended questions to get people talking, direct questions to get specific data, and listening. Use simple language to avoid confusion, and repeat statements back to the speakers to make sure you've heard them correctly. Match the rhythm of the negotiations to the culture and situation. Use deadlines only if you're aware of the risks involved. For example, a strict deadline can terminate a negotiation without a deal. Make sure your deadlines are logical. Always be sure that a deal is attainable, and that those present can make the deal. Sometimes people are not ready to deal. Some come unprepared, whether due to outside pressure or as a stalling tactic. Sometimes people negotiate mostly to get more information, and sometimes they want to make a deal, but they're disorganized and simply can't. At those times, decide whether to walk away or to try an ultimatum. Use ultimatums even more sparingly than deadlines, and only if the risk is worth it and you're willing to follow up on it. For an ultimatum to work, your opponent must believe your threat, and must believe that, the total cost of complying with the ultimatum is much lower than the total cost of defying it. Become a master negotiator. Most people underestimate the negotiator's task. To be a good negotiator, you must think deeply about abstract and factual concerns, and master the issues being negotiated. Finally, you need to understand people and how they relate. To be a master negotiator, you also need to be innovative, and able to create and communicate a vision of a relationship. You need to be able to read people, harmonize with them and balance past plans with present opportunities. You need to be able to recognize general principles, but also to see what makes a specific situation unique, even as it evolves. If you can do these things, you'll negotiate well.